Brian Powell of I Run Far here at Stevie Kremer after her win at the 2014 Ma Matterhorn Old Tracks 46K. Congratulations, Stevie. Thanks, Brian. It was great to see you here. Oh, it was a great time out there. What a beautiful day here in the Alps. We lucked out. It was incredible. I, I, I had so many views of the Matterhorn, and it was like I could touch it. It was so close. And weather-wise, it was about the nicest day I've ever seen uh, in the Alps. Yep, I've never been more comfortable in a temperature. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, the race itself, the longest, the most elevation, longest both tel uh, distance wise and time wise. Well, I have oh. done one or two that were the similar distance. Okay, but time wise. Say. But time wise, it's definitely the longest. So, what was early on? You you didn't go out in front of everybody. You went out with. Uh... Nope. So, there were three girls kind of in the front. I was one of them. And, you know, it starts with a climb, and that's definitely where I try to get some advantage. Just I am a better climber than downhill. So we, the three of us stuck together pretty well, but then there was a super And that was you, Casey, and Alyssa Desco. Exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, and then the first downhill, the first long descent, those two, Casey and Elisa, they just took off. And that's where I tried to hold back a little bit because I knew my legs would be shot, and I, I knew we had at least one huge climb left. So, um, yeah, that's, that, that was my goal. And then I think with me... Um, I think with me. And I, with you? <laughs> I think with me, like holding back on the down, I, I had some legs still, you know, to be able to do that that long, long climb that was still ahead. That's some pretty good foresight for somebody who's not raced that long a time before, like, to, to know that, okay, it's not time to go yet. Well, I just remember someone telling me that there's four climbs in this race. Okay. And, and we had had two climbs. So I knew there was a big climb coming. I'd never previewed the course. I didn't know what to expect. And actually, I bumped the Killian was half was was on one part. And I asked him. I said, "So do we go down again or up again?" He goes, "You go up a little bit more, and then it's a very long downhill." So I knew that I I, I was done with the ups, and that's why I was able to cruise on the last downhill. From Trefton. Yeah. 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 Um, did you have any rough patches along the way? It seemed like you rolled pretty well the whole time. I mean, definitely that last 8K, 10K played mind games because it kind of went up and then it dropped and then it went up again and that was hard. But um, I, I felt pretty good throughout the race, yeah. But that's it's going to be hard because you have you don't know where they are. You've got Casey, you've got Emily, you've got Maite, you've got Alyssa, and they're just could be a minute behind you. Well, and that's, that's the thing. You have to go in with confidence saying, okay, I'm going to let these girls go ahead of me and... and hope that they kind of slow down, you know, on, on the next climb and I can catch them. So there's there's some, you know, I, I have to be confident in, in my thoughts. And I had never seen Emily or Micah. I saw Emily in the initial climbs. I, I looked back and she was there. So I knew she was somewhere close, but Micah we never saw. So to see her come in third was awesome for her. But, oh my gosh, totally unexpected from not being able to see her at all. Yeah. And a lot of times you can gauge by cheers. Because by the time the girls come, the, you know, the top 10, 20 boys are already through. So, so it's kind of quiet for the so rest of the guys. Quiet, yeah. yeah. But for girls, it's like an uproar. And mm -hmm. so I kept listening every time we passed a group of people. And if there was loud, loud cheering, I kind of knew a girl was somewhat So like in Shreve, you could hear that you were at a couple minutes. Well, yeah. And I, I refused to look. I refused to see. I just, just went for it. Yeah. So did you have a point where you're like, all right. No. This race is mine? No. 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 Not until you... Because Elisa and Casey and Emily know how to descend so well. Mm -hmm. And with, you know, 8K of descending technical, somewhat technical, it was not technical, they could be anywhere. They could be right behind me. They could be five minutes back. So I was never confident until I crossed that finish line. With, with this additional elevation gain, were you afraid that you weren't going to have that climbing ability or that your quads were going to blow out or anything like that? I'm really scared of cramping. I knocked really? on wood, I've never cramped, but... The up, down, up, down, up, down, a lot of people cramp, their legs cramp, and that's what I was scared of, so. Didn't happen? Knock on wood, no. Maybe the secret is, you know, arriving at 8 p.m. the night before the <laughs> race? Yeah, I think tomorrow's gonna be a rough day. And you leave in about half an hour? Yeah, yep. So you're gonna well, be in... Well, my flight is early tomorrow morning, so I have to get back to Geneva tonight. But in Zermatt, where the yeah. race was, you're gonna be here like 18 hours. Or yeah, a little less than 20, yeah, 20 like hours, yep, yep. How did you manage start. your travel? Because that's a that's hard. Like I know a lot of people want to go out a week, you know, three, four days, even a week beforehand to get just relaxed and. Well, acclimated. you know, I think I almost think sometimes going there for one, two days before a race is way better for me than a week. Mm -hmm. I, the, the you know 
the build up to a big race like this it only creates nerves for me. So I like, I think the day before is a little too close to the race, but two days before I think it's perfect. You have one night to sleep, you know, for the jet lag and then another night before the race. So yeah, two nights before is perfect for me. This was a little too, too short. But I'm glad I came. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, you've had a, a lot of great battles with, uh, with Emily over the last two years and, and continued it this year. Yeah. Were you surprised that you were yeah. a good bit ahead? I, I was very surprised. You know, I, I think Emily's going to longer distances though. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. And she she trains a lot. She runs, she loves the mountains, so you know. A lot I don't more know. volume than you? In terms oh, of I think so, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I stick to my two, two and a half hours a day of, you know, once in the morning before work and once after work. So, so. you split that up into two runs? Yeah, I never go that long. Uh, maybe once a weekend. I'll but yeah. yeah. Normally it's just an hour, hour and yeah. a half out there. Yeah. With oh, some intensity yeah. at least, right? Or Well, yeah, because I'm always in a rush, I feel like. So you always have to hurry, <laughs> which is probably good in the end. Which is what you're doing again today. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, that's great. Where do you head to next? I mean, besides back to school on Monday, but yeah, where, race wise? In, you know, nothing's in the books until Limone in Italy. October. And that's October, so I have like six weeks. So, no, you're not going to the run? No, I can't. Best friends getting married. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. Thanks. It's been six and a half long years. Really? Yeah. Hi, Marshall. <laughs> nice work, Marshall. Yeah. No time. No, just kidding. Uh, wow. Yeah. So it's fun. New, new. You know, I love sky running and I love traveling for races, but it's fun to have something else to look forward to. Totally. So, yeah. Well, again, congratulations Thank on you. both your great race this weekend and uh, your engagement. You. And Thanks. See you around. Thanks. Thanks for having me.